I'm getting ready now to assemble the uh, power supply board for the Harbach uh, power supply upgrade. I've gone ahead and checked the bill of materials against the components. Everything uh, appears to be here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and solder the, the components on here. They're all flush mount except for these resistors, which are these resistors here. They're, um, what are they? 3 watt resistors that are 82k ohm each and they're they are supposed to be spaced about a quarter inch above the board probably for heat dissipation so I'm gonna go ahead and start soldering stuff on here and they're all everything is labeled by number on here and there's a, an associated part number on the right so for example C1 through C6 that's these large electrolytic capacitors they're listed C1 through C6 each one's listed here one two Oh, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it tells you exactly what it is. They're 220 microfarad, 450 volt electrolytic capacitor. So everything's pretty well spelled out. So right now I'm installing R11 through R12, which are, um, there's three 4.7 mega ohm resistors that are one watt each. I'm installing them so that the color code is all in the same direction so they're easy to read if you were to ever look in here again. And I'm folding the leads about where they go into the board so they're spaced correctly. And that the, uh, the actual installation looks neat and uniform. I'm bending the leads on the back side so that they're kind of held in place and I'll go ahead and solder them on and then clip off the leads. So there's an example of the first set of components soldered on. These diodes that go on here are listed D1 through D8 and if you notice on the the diagram the cathode end is is easily visible on each one of these so that <clears throat> you can orientate them the correct direction. Again, when I'm installing these, I'm trying to bend these leads so that the uh, part designator is facing up. So if they ever had to replace one of these diodes, they could actually read the, the part type from the top of the board without having to, de to desolder the, the unit.
diodes are bent in place there and I'm just double checking to make sure that they're orientated correctly, which they are. I'm making sure when I solder these on here that the solder covers the entire pad and flows onto it with a little bit of excess so it looks like a smooth solder joint when it's done but it's fully connected all the way around 360 degrees around the lead so it has a nice good connection to the board want we'll to make sure it gets hot enough so you don't have a cold solder joint but not so hot that you uh, lift the pad off the board To give you an idea what that looks like. I'll go ahead and clip those off. Okay, there's the diodes. Next resistor I'm going to solder on here is R7, which is a 910 ohm resistor, and it this one is marked right on at 910 ohms. Let's see. Let's do uh, R8. 3.6k ohms. That should be this one. Let's double check with a meter just to be absolutely sure. And that's it. That was R8. Just double check here again. R8 3.6k I'm going to orientate this one so you start reading it from the left. Okay, R9 is a 1 ohm 3 watt resistor. It's got to be this big one. That's what it is. It says 1 ohm right on it. Again, I have the label of the 1 ohm facing up so you can read it without desoldering it. So I've done the uh, the diodes. I'm, I'm marking it off here on the chart, the parts list. I did the 1 ohm, 910, that was this one, so I've done that one. And I did the um, 3.6K and the uh, 4.7, that's these three, I did those. 15K 82k uh, okay so the only one is a 15k and that is designation that says not available so it must be in another part of the circuit okay so I guess the next thing I'll work on then is the uh, these resistors here and I want to space them off the board about a quarter of an inch so I gotta figure out a way to hold them off the board the correct distance 
I found a stick that I had here that's just about a quarter of an inch thick and it looks like it'll fit just underneath these resistors. So I'll just lay this down here and put the resistors in over the top of that and solder them on. Okay, I'm going to bend the leads on all these before I install them. I can install them all at one shot. Again, I'm installing them so the labels all face the same direction, just almost like a uh, way to show that a little bit of care was taken in the quality of the assembly. As I'm installing these, I'm bending the leads back on each side to hold the resistor in place that you can't really see what I'm doing on the back side, but I'm bending the leads slightly. And give me an idea what it looks like on the back where those solder joints are at and then on top so they're nice and evenly spaced and they're up from the board so they have nice airflow for cooling okay now it's the uh, electrolytic capacitors if you'll notice that there's a plus sign on all these. Electrolytics have to be installed properly polarized. If they're not, they can explode. Now if you look at these capacitors, there's a, a band here that's a negative mark. That negative pole is right there. So the negative is on that side, positive is on that side. Since these are so large, I think I'm going to solder them on one at a time rather than trying to install them all at one shot. Again, I'm trying to get the, the solder to flow on with enough and heat up enough so that it flows into the joint. Uh, let's see right here. You want to get it heated enough, but not so hot that you melt things, but melt the solder, of course. And if you also notice, the positive side has a square hole, and the negative side has a round hole, or at least the pad is square and round, so you can tell the two apart. So if you wanted to double check, the negative should be on the round hole, the negative is on this side, the negative is the round hole here.
I think I'm going to leave those leads long like that. The other thing I'm going to do is before I install this, I'll clean off this board to get rid of any little solder splatters or extra flux residue. This blue wire still has to be attached to the bottom side of the circuit board at uh, location hole V, which I'll do that in a moment. And then also there was a 15K resistor. I looked uh, down the instructions further and it's uh, later in the assembly process that that will be installed. So let me get this blue wire soldered on here. The next portion requires some disassembly of the power supply module in the amplifier. Mm -hmm. 